Shalom Aloha. My name is Breatharian. Heroin! Big Dick! The fourth. Not the crew, hot, oh oh, I look good, wow, oh oh, all the niche, not for the new to be, boy, just I'm not the crew. We have a problem. We have a big fucking problem. A huge fucking problem. CMD, chronic masturbation disorder, is at an all time high. The Syndex charts are showing that those suffering with CMD are not only at an all time high, but the masturbation frequency amongst those suffering is at an all time high of 33 fabs per day. Let that sink in, brothers and sisters. Your fellow brethren are strangulating their scrotum to the point of ejaculation 33 times a day. And not only is that of grave concern, no, there's something else that's of even more alarming concern. Although the very act of self-fapulation drains the body of vital minerals such as selenium, zinc, magnesium and other said crucial nutrients, the real concern is what comes along with chronic fapulation. The silent partner, the buy one, get one free, 10.99 going out the door, free pornography. And remember, brothers and sisters, if something is free, if anything is free, then that means that you are the product. And in this case, that statement couldn't be more true. So what is constant consumption of pornographic imagery do to one's mind? I'll tell you what it does. It does two things. But first of all, let me tell you something alarming. The average consumer of pornographic video consumes roughly three pornographies a day. Now, if you take into account that the average pornography consumer begins his journey of watching pornography at the tender age of 11, well, folks, by the time that tender juvenile has reached adolescenthood and becomes 21 years of age, if you do the mathematics, that individual has watched over 10,000 pornographic films. Quite a lot indeed. So what does the pornographic film do to the individual? I'll tell you what it does. It does two things. First of all, it gives you a codependent, addictive, positive pleasure feedback loop between you and your black mirror. In other words, if you're having a pleasurable experience affiliated with your black mirror, that black mirror being your cell phone, your computer screen, or even a VR helmet. If you're releasing dopamine three times a day and associating that dopamine release with a computer screen or any other screen, now your brain is telling you that that screen is a sexual partner. An object of pleasure, an object of addiction. And if you've had over 10,000 sexual experiences with your cell phone, while well, those neurological pathways within your brain now associate love and pleasure with a black mirror. And I call it a black mirror because if you turn it off, well, what is it? It's a black screen reflecting you or whoever's looking at it. Its very definition is a black fucking mirror. In the very first Harry Potter book, uh, the movie, what was that? Homosexual and the Homosexual Stone. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, sorry. There was a scene in that movie where Harry Potter comes across a mirror. I can't remember what that mirror was called, but it's a great metaphor. Because that mirror showed whoever looked into it their heart's deepest desire. I think that old homosexual Elvis Dumbledore actually told Harry if there was a man that was perfectly content and happy with the world, when he looked into that mirror, he would see himself. 
The metaphor is your fucking cell phone. Your cell phone will show you your heart's deepest desires. You can go down a rabbit hole of conspiracies that will provide a narrative that really gives you an echo chamber of whatever conspiratorial rhetoric you want to hear. You can uh, watch a video of a car being repaired if your deepest desire is to replace that radiator. And perhaps if your deepest desire is to watch a uh, runaway woman get fucked by a big black man and squirt to it, well, your black mirror will also show you that. Combine that with an AI algorithm, artificial fucking intelligence, feeding you suggestive programming to your already curious mind, well, you see, that's a recipe for disaster. What started off as simple pornographic film watching is now turned into some sort of degenerate, perverted behaviour. The second thing that copious amounts of pornography will do to you is turn you into a fucking cuck. Why? Well, think about it. The young 11-year-old juvenile looks at a woman that he finds attractive and instead of him taking initiative and speaking to that woman, no, he watches somebody else plough her, fuck her, and then he arouses himself to another alpha man and squirts like a little fucking gimp in the corner, perverted. And he does that 10,000 times while his brain is fucking developing. So now, your neurological fucking pathways don't associate you and the woman as a pleasurable experience. No, your brain has now made a neurological pathway where the pleasure comes from another man fucking the woman that you're attracted to. And now, the only way you can get aroused is if you stand in the corner and strangle your pathetic little scrotum while another fucking alpha male pounds the chick that you find attractive. Putrid. Degenerate. Filthy. So they're the two things that uh, pornography does to your mind. There's many other things, but they're the two hard-hitting, in-your-face truths. You might think that it's good for your prostate or whatever. It's not. It completely fucks your neurological pathways within your brain. And if you've been watching porn for 20 years, well, that means you've watched nearly 50,000 pornographic movies. And you've probably graduated from watching a woman get fucked to maybe some sort of sick bestiality where the family pet venomous snake has an anal experience. A man gets fucked by a snake or something else of degenerate nature. I don't know what level of sickness you're at, but if you've been watching pornographic films for more than 10 years, then you are actually fucked, sick, degenerate, filth. And I will keep this stream PG. Pregnant fucking gimp approved. So if what I've just said is hitting home a little bit and you think, holy shit, maybe my brain's a little bit fucked, well, I've got some good news for you. I've came up with an invention. Introducing the Nazi Wank Machine 4000. The Nazi Wank Machine 4000 takes inspiration from some of German's finest engineering. At the peak of World War II in 1942, a young German doctor by the name of Himmler developed an extraordinary machine. This machine, commonly referred to as the homicidal Nazi masturbation machine, was a machine that would extract seminal fluid. The homicidal masturbation Nazi wank machine is a very sensitive topic for many people. And if I was to continue to show you the glory and power of our invention, I'm afraid that my channel would become flagged. So here's what I suggest you do. Go read the comments. Sorry, the video link in this description, and there you'll see a link to my Patreon, okay? It's five bucks a month, that's less than two cups of coffee per month, right? 
and I live stream there every Sunday and it's interactive. You can comment, you can have a crack at me if you're feeling ready to face Leviathan the fourth. Or you can simply join our like-minded community where everybody gets along, has a bong and sings a fucking song. So head on down to Patreon where you can see the full video and it witness the power and the glory of the of the Nazi wank machine 4000 say hi join the community and ask me anything you want where i stream live every sunday 8 p.m hawaiian time i'll see you there shalom fist my ass and aloha